Hello YouTube, welcome to the dojo! You're here with Samurai Man, and today we have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Classics Collection 1990s live action Jim Henson styled movie figures! That was a big ol' intro, I made that work like nobody's business. But here we have them, looking glorious! They are fantastic in sculpt and in articulation, they are just so beautiful. I picked these up at Toys R Us today. Wasn't expecting to find them, but surprisingly, they are out really quick. Like, Comic-Con was July 24th, I think. It was 24th through the 26th, was it? Something like that. Around that area. It is now August 9th? 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 Yes, it is August 9th. So, I think that was plus like a week after. So, wow, they really just got them out. They wanted them selling. So here we have them. They look fantastic. You can see they are much different from the 80s cartoon themed classes collection. And they, they do look great in their own style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over them together right now in their similar designs. And once I pick out all of the things that they have in common, I'm going to go over what's individual about them. And then I'm going to do comparisons between them and their counterparts from the 80s cartoon. So... Woo! That's how we're going to go about it. Starting off, they all have this nicely done shell here. Much different from before. This one's a little more chubbier in the abdomen area. Just because that's how they looked in the, the movie. And then they have their masks individually molded and their faces, as you can see. You see Donatello, or uh, Donatello. You see Raphael's a little more rounded off, where Leonardo's a little more beaked. So that's nice. And then we have here Donatello is a little more wider. And then Mikey's again way more rounded off. He has the most rounded of the bunch. Their masks are actually molded different. You can see Mikey's is a little more, you know, softer looking, a little more up up and highlighted just because he's in a good mood. Donatello's is kind of scrunched because he's got that smile going on. You see going on there around the sides of his mask. Leonardo's is a little more scrunched up also just because he's he's got like that intense battle look like he's ready to fight some foot. And then we have here Raphael's who has really scrunched up at the brow just because he's got that kind of fierce look like I'm gonna get it back, get it back. Talking about those sighs like he lost a sigh. You always have to make that joke with this guy. Like, come on man, you're gonna lose a sigh and you talk about getting it back? What are you doing? So of course, you can't make that, you can't just like not make that joke. But they all look very nice. You can see they have, they have the same texture of skin, which is nice. Unlike the 80s classic collection, they have the same exact color, which is how it was in the movie, so that's fine. I can, I'm, I'm happy with that. This is a more rugged-looking set than the 80s cartoons because this, this is more rugged in design. They had a little more... It was more grittier, I want to say. Like, 90s movies, obviously, the it was the 90s, so of course they're going to be grittier, but... They were they, they seem like they're a little bit more gritty in the design just with all the brown, lots of brown, little more earth tones, dark color skin. The shells are really intensely done. Their gear is all nicely detailed. And it's just it just I always thought of it as a grittier look. And they are missing that pattern on their skins with all the, the spots. And I kind of thought of them as maybe as warts. I don't know, do turtles have warts? Is that just a frog thing? Maybe they're Kung Fu Toads in that movie. I don't know, but they're missing it. Uh, I know a lot of people complain about that because that was kind of their thing. They were really known for having a pattern, whereas usually they are just solid. But I don't mind it, honestly, too much. Uh, obviously, if they had it, it would be better, but I think this looks fine. I, I do like how they look. And as you can also see, they each come with their individual sewer plates that have their names on them so go ahead and take a quick look at those but i really want to point out that they each as you can see going down the line you can see it gets darker i don't know why i mean lighter i don't know why that's the way it is i mean they're there it's not like it was purposely done because they're individually packaged it's not like it's a set where they just get brighter as they go i just picked out four of them made sure their paint jobs were nice but I don't know, maybe maybe it is intentionally done and all the Michelangelo's have a really light one and maybe all the Raphael's have a really dark one. I'm not too sure, but you could really see that it's a pretty significant change. And that's just coincidence. I just happen to line it up. I'm just noticing that now. So just something to mention. So as you can see, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are so stealthy, even their nameplates blend in to their backgrounds and scenarios and fade into the background. But yes, here they are. It's just, you know, 
complete coincidence is the same thing I use in every video. It's not like I planned this, or did I? But here we have them. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 1990. Ooh, it's really blurry. Let me fix this. So you can see here we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I really like what they did here, 1990 movie Leo. They gave him the nickname, because it would have been very easy just to say Leonardo like they did with the other one, and just copy that. So I'm glad they did make this a little different from the original 80s cartoon classic collection nameplate. So yeah, that's a nice little unique property to it. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1990 movie Raph. Again, like that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1990 movie Don. I kind of wish it would say Donnie. I mean, do they ever call him Don? Every now and then, but really, they call him Donnie. And the same with this one. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1990 movie Mike. Again, never really call him Mike. It's it's always Mikey. But I, I mean, it'd be really hard to fit that, so I can forgive it. They just have longer names than the rest, but still... I do like it. It's very nice. So starting off with my favorite turtle, we have Raphael. And he looks awesome. Look at that face sculpt. You can see all these really nice looking muscles on his neck. Like he's really just beefed out. His arms have a little bit more muscle to them than the other figures. Not the other of this set, but the other classics, classics figure. So it looks nice. I like the shell. How it's separated from the rest of his skin. Because it is a shell. It isn't like officially you know, a piece of his body, it's not an organ or anything. I like all the details in these elbow pads and wrist guards. The elbow pads and knee pads look like they have some panel lining, but that's actually, I don't think they do, because I've, I've really been looking at them, and I think that's just like the design, this, the, the detail they've done in how they've used the material on it, that it's not actually panel lining, that's just the actual material is just scrunched up like that. So I think that's really cool. And again, he's got these pouches on his uh, stomach to hold his side, because he can. And as you can see, he can hold them in his fingers as well in that classic look. Also, you can see he's got on one side, he's got that grin, that little, uh, I'm about to kick some foot butt, and that look on his face. Like he's about to go have some fun with Casey Jones. Party out. So that's very cool. If you come around to the back of him, he's got that bandana, head bandana. It's very long on him. He's got a long one. And I really like this texture on the shell. If you can see that here, go ahead and put a little up distance. There it is. Yeah, you can see he has a really nicely done shell. They all do. They have interesting patterns in them. Whereas the 80s cartoon one has had a solid pattern. So I do like that. You can see his has a little crack in it. I don't know if his is the only one. I'll take a look at the rest when we go down the line. But for now, his has a nice little scratch and crack there. One here, he's got a slice at the top. A little bit more at the bottom. Kind of looks like he's got almost like a bullet hole, like if you look right there to tip tip with my finger, it kind of looks like a bullet hole. So it's interesting, maybe Raph's the, because Raph is known for being the tough guy brawler, so usually he has stuff like that on the current figures. Let's see if how that goes with just him or is it the rest, but that just, I love that face sculpt, it just looks so nice. And now here we have Leonardo's close-up and personal look, again, very muscly on these guys. They did beef these guys out, just because they were that way in the movie, they were Pretty bulky, you know. People in suits, but still bulky. And again, he's got a nicely done bandana. Blue. It's a dark blue. It's not just blue, but it's a little more, like I said, darker, grittier blue than what you usually see. Because he, this is a more grittier style. Very nice. Look at all that. Again, he's got his, his sheaths, his scabbards. A little more tattered up and beaten up just because it's, again, grittier, tougher looking. And let's see, let me just remove him for a sec. Oh, you know what? I think he has the same patterns on his shell too. Yep, 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 never mind. All their shells have that same pattern. You can see underneath there, he's got that. And again, he's got like kind of like that bullet hole looking, you know, speck right there. So it turns out it's not just Raphael. They all have the exact same patterns. That's kind of a letdown just because, you know... It would make them more individual if they each had at least different scars on their shells. But I can forgive it. The eyes are pretty nicely done. Some, like, I don't know what it is with the classes collections, but the eyes are usually pretty boo, not the greatest. I think Donatello has the worst of it. He does in my, my 80s version, and I think the movie one also has the worst of it. 
but not too bad. And now we're up with Donatello, and I'm not crazy about that face. He does look a bit too goofy for my taste. He is the, the brains of the operation. Although in the, that, that didn't really start up until the 2003 cartoon, I believe. Because I, I think in the original comics, they basically all had that same tough guy attitude. They might have had some individual perks, but they're basically all really, really gritty and tough. And then in the 90s movie, or in the 80s cartoon, they were all, again, they, they did have a little subtle individual personalities. But for the most part, they were all fun and party and pizza in the 80s cartoon. And then in the 90s movie, same thing, party, having fun. I don't, I really don't remember if they had too much personality differences. They did in the Next Mutation TV show, but I think that's that's probably where it actually, not the 2003 cartoon, but in the Next Mutation, that's probably where their personalities really started developing. But still, I think I think this head would have been better on Mikey, and then Mikey's face would have been better on Donnie, just because I do like the smile on Mikey, don't get me wrong, but I think the goofy grin would have been better for him. That's just personal preference. I think for him, it might have been like a smirk. Kind of not, not like an angry smirk like Raph's, but just like a, a smug like, <laughs> I got you. Like that kind of smirk. Personal opinion, just saying. But again, we'll take a look at the back shell. Not really a point, just because as I discovered, they are, they are all the same. So yeah, there it is again that with that nice texture on it. Smooth skin, not really scaly or anything. Bandana right there. Muscles on those muscles. He's got muscles on his muscles. Very nice. He's kind of got that look like, oh, huh, huh, huh. like, oh, I'm going to get you. I don't know. Goofy. Kind of like in the 2007 movie when Donut, or not Donut, when Mikey got that job in that goofy, like, face mask. It, it, I mean, obviously that one wasn't as intense as this one, but that's the vibe I'm getting. And here we're back to Mikey with a very nicely done orange. Again, a little bit of a dark orange. Just make it a little more intense. Looks very nice. Again, I really do like that smile. It's very, very much Michelangelo's smile. Just happy-go-lucky, carefree guy. Fighting the foot in his own fashion. And again, that shell, exactly the same as the rest. Just because, I don't know why, but they decided to make it the same. And again, I like the very... You can tell it's very separated from each part of the shell from the skin. It doesn't look like it's just, you know, one chunk. He's not all just one solid torso. He does have the split between shell and skin and shell. So I do like that. So again, we'll take a little closer look at him just to get a full body view. You see all these much more muscly lines throughout his arms here and his neck and chest. You can see that. We'll go ahead and come down. Really, you can see it in his legs. I just want to point out his legs real quick. You can see his thighs are ripped. He, he You know this guy's got a, a fixed gear. He is chugging along on that fixed gear all day long. Look at those thighs. Beautiful. This man is an Adonis. Very nicely done again with the knee pads. They look very well detailed. And those, those toes. Look at those toes. Look at that nail. Honestly, when I fiddle with the feet, I feel weird just because these toes look so realistic. I feel like I'm touching a human foot. And it, it disturbs me a little, to be honest. I'm a little disturbed. But damn, look at that calf. Look at that calf. Immense. That's the word for it. Immense. Then we'll come back around. Take a look at that shell again. Look at the, the blades. You can see. Very nicely done scabbard. He's got the cross scabbard. Look over the double, you know, swords coming on the, the same angle. So they got the cross. Which I like. Again, that's the same as the movies. Really glad they're not, well, to my knowledge, they're not doing a next mutation line. Just because that'd be dumb. I mean, I like the, the looks, but I don't like the weapons. The weapons in the next mutation were weird. So Leonardo does come with obviously his scabbard that is detachable, comes separated from the box and all you have to do is it's again that half circle peg that you just plug into the back of that sash that comes along actually along it all around you can see has the double sashes up here that connect the sores, goes around his waist, no logo or anything just because they didn't have it in the movies. Came around, back again. Again you got these ropes keeping them together, I like that. And then also we got the swords, which again, gritty, no no distinguishable color, just brown. And then the blades in gray. One complaint I have about the swords is the packaging. They did a terrible job at packaging these swords. The way they had it is they had it going through a hole, and then bent it through plastic, and then back through another hole. So it was pretty much like all like this. And I had to like take it out, put it underneath a hair dryer for quite a while. Just to get it to this state. It's not even perfect. They're not even perfectly straight. I'm going to have to do it again. 
But trust me, they were way worse when I got these out of the package. So I don't know who packages things at Playmates, but that's like maybe not the second time that's happened. I've actually had it with a Hasbro toy, so I'm not going to blame Playmates for that. But seriously, toy packagers who keep doing stuff like that, stop it. Stop it right now. But anyways, you can take the sword and just kind of like move his thumb out of the way. Just stick it in his hand. It can be a little tricky to get his fingers to hold it, but once they got a grip, they got a grip. So, no worries. Just hold it down. Other blade. Go in there. There we go. And he's holding it. Ready to fight some foot. Feet, foot. Das boot on the foot. But there you go. It looks great. I like finding poses for him to do. Because, again, these guys are selling point. is the 34 points of articulation. Because Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toys are not known for articulation. So, this is the highlight of these guys. Just find something awesome and I'll do it. I've got some good poses with my regular figures, so I'm sure getting in with these guys is not a problem at all. He's ready to go. He's like, cry! Something like that. But just for posability, I'll show it off in this guy, but I'm not going to do it for all of them, obviously. No point in doing that, so let's get him off of here. We'll start with the feet and move up. The toes are each individually jointed, so you can have one of them up and down, like he's like, do do do, just thinking along, messing around, do it like that. Ankles, swivel all the way around, rotation, you can bring them up, and down, and all around. He's ready to go on that. Actually, the way mine was packaged was like this, on this foot. So at first I thought the leg armor was flipped around the knee pad. I thought that was flipped around. Then I like twisted, I tried to twist it and the whole leg was going. I looked at it and I'm like, the calf is like facing out this way, so I'm like, oh, pfft. they just, they did that, and I had to twist the foot around. Not a big deal, but just keep an eye out for stuff like that, because, again, these people who package things don't know what they're doing. I don't know, the, the job doesn't seem that hard, all you have to do is make sure the toy looks like the picture. That, that's it. But anyways, he's got that nice line down the middle of his abdomen, again, it goes across. He's got the sash, as I mentioned before, wrist guards, elbow pads, knee pads, all looking nice. He does have thigh rotation. It's kind of hard to get a grip on it on the thigh alone, but you do have it. It looks weird if you turn it. You can see it's because the, the lines on the thigh are supposed to match up. He does have thigh muscles, as I mentioned. Beef feet, beef cake. Put that away for now. But yeah, so I just kind of leave him like that, and then I use the inner thigh joint to do my posing. The shell can get in the way a bit, but not that big a deal. It can bend at the knee. The knee pad does get in the way a little bit, but it's not too major. Nothing, I, I, I'm not going to complain about that. His fingers are individually articulated, so you can just bring them in. It's only at one joint, but still. And the thumb just kind of rotates and goes up and down. I use like, hey, I need a ride, sir. I'm hitchhiking, I need a ride. Do I need to cut your head off? Nah, I'm just kidding, just kidding. Double bend at the elbow, got one up here, one up here. Rotation at the bicep. I have heard complaints about the shoulders, and I just want to say, my shoulders are fine. As you can see, I'm having no issues bringing them up and down. That's with all my figures. They were, some of them were stiff at first, but once I just really just like give it a good like bend, once I was able to get it, that was it. Like now they all work solidly. I kind of had to deal with a couple of joints that were really solid, then I just needed to like bend them, and all of a sudden now they're good. See, no, no issues. It's going everywhere. I don't have to put really any effort into it. He's just working his shoulder, getting ready to do a fight. Stuff like that, so, you know, just something to look out for. Because I know a lot of people from the SDCC versions of the figures, which are the same exact things, I know they had a lot of shoulder complaints. And I don't know if maybe that was a QC issue with the first round that they got fixed with the retail version. I don't know. But that's just something I wanted to point out. And, of course, his head's free-ranging ball. So, you know, it's kind of limited just because his head's big and his neck's small. But you can get something like, woo! Ah, woo! There goes the other sword. Now we got my favorite of the bunch, Raphael. Again, same exact articulation, same basic details. The only difference is now his weight strap is different. He's got those holsters for his side, and he doesn't have anything on the back, obviously. Just goes around him nicely. Looks like a giant rubber band, honestly. But goes around him nicely. And again, that face is different. It's a little more rounded and less beakish. He's got that smirk, like... <laughs> something like that. So you can hold the sigh, obviously with all the articulation, you can't hold the sigh in his hand like he does in the movie. And if you want, you can have him lose it. So maybe he's fighting off the the foot and he just Oh shoot. I'm gonna get it back. Get it back. 
something like that. I don't know, you know, jokes, jokes. I love you, Raph, don't worry. But if you want, you can also hold it in his hand like a normal weapon. I find it's easier to close the fist, then put the weapon in the hand, than to try to put the hand in the weapon and then close the fist. It just, that's just how it works. I don't know. I don't know. But there you go. That looks good, too. Either is good. I don't mind either way. But I prefer it the other way just because it's just the way he usually holds the side. It's a unique way to hold the weapon, so I like it that way. And then if you want, put the side in the holster. And it makes it much easier to grab. I prefer when the side holsters are on the front rather than the back just because this is more easier to grab. You can actually have him, like, grab his own weapon and release it if you wanted to. Like, have him maybe like that, like he's getting ready to fight. That's actually not a bad pose. I might keep him like that for a little while. But just, you know, it's easier to do that than reach from the back. I mean, look at this shell. He's got to reach all the way around that to grab it. That's not happening. And now we have Donatello standing right nicely there. And just to point out, they can stand without their bases. The bases are there just for more stability and also just a nice prop just to look nice. You don't really need it, but he will stand. See? But if I push him back, yeah, he still stands. See? So it's mostly just there for, again, added stability and just to look nice, just to add to the figure. But you can see his bow staff is done up in all brown instead of doing with the white wraps just to make it look a little more, I don't want to say plain Jane, but they were trying to make all the weapons look similar. There was no individuality in them. They wanted them all to be, you know, just straight to the point. This is the weapon. That's it. And then the turtles are the turtles. Again, that weird goofy green. Oh, 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 oh. He's got that kind of going on. Come around the side. You can see he's got that same strap, but now he's got a single strap coming around here holding up his bow staff. So if you want to, you can take it out of his hands. Put it in his strap. You have to have it into at least the, the first or second layer of brown to get it going. It's a little tight, but you get it. There you go. Once you get the right angle, bam. Now he's got his bow staff ready to go. I do think it's weird having the bow staff straight up and down. I think it looks... Well, I mean, I think this looks fine, but I think it's just more practical to have it angled like a sword. Just make it easier to draw it. But, hey, it's his staff. He can wear it however he feels. So, that doesn't look bad either. It's just, I think it's just more practical in the other way. But I still, I like Donnie. He does machines. And here we have Michelangelo. And he is holding his nunchuck in the way I always want him to hold it. In between his armpits. Because that's just classic, you know, nunchuck holding skills. Hold it there and then you whip it out like... Bow, 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 bow. I've seen Bruce Lee. I've watched Enter the Dragon. So, you don't always get to have Michelangelo hold his nunchuck like this, unfortunately. But this version can, because again, 30 points of articulation, got to put them to use. And again, it's got that very nicely done metal chain. Yes! Metal chain time. So, I'm not entirely sure how the nunchuck are supposed to go in here. I think they go like this to make it easier for them to reach around. Just if I can get it in, there we go. So, I have one like that. And then have one like. Nee, his chains are in the way. Nee. Here we go. And here we go. There we go. Uh, again, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, wait. You know what? That's dumb. I just realized. This makes a whole lot more sense. Derper derp. Derper derper. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. It's 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 late. It's almost midnight. I'm, I've had a long day. I'm tired. It's hot. I've worked all week. I'm gap, 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 gap. There we go. So, yes. I think this is the way they, one of the ways it can go. I've seen people do it like this. I've seen them have the chain underside. It's all preference. I just think this is standard way. I do like the storage for that. Again, uh, it'd be hard to reach around the shell, so I do wish the straps were in the front. But still, that's nice storage. I do like back straps as well. I just think they look more practical in the front. So, yeah, that's just my opinion. Watch out! See, if you had his nunchucks in hand, this would be a really cool pose. So I'm sure a lot of you are like me, thinking that, hey, I bet these 1990s turtles are just like the 80s turtles, just, you know, new heads. You are wrong, my friend. You are very wrong. I was very wrong, and I'm very glad I'm wrong, because these are completely remade new molds. Everything has been remade on these guys. Their heads are obviously very different, you can see. Their heads are much smaller at the top, at the peak of them, where these ones are much far squared off. I think the eyes are a little better done. This one's not too bad. My Leo doesn't have his too bad of eyes, but you can see they're they're gazing. They're quite gazing. These eyes have little white dots in the middle, just to give them a little more realistic 
live action look where these ones are just black dots these ones are black dots with little white dots in the center these ones have these wrist flaps like really weird knuckle flaps to cover the joints that are gone I'm glad they're gone they're just not needed at all they look kind of weird the wrist guards elbow pads knee pads all completely redone and done up in brown these pat are these sashes here completely redone new design also the shells completely different shells we can see here these are rounded here they have an outer layer whereas these ones don't have the outer layer and they're much smoother and smaller the muscle tone is very different these ones have much more muscles and they're showing them and much more molding in line with these ones more smoother as they should be and you see this comes more peaked down at the point where this one's a little more rounded off they don't have their belts the same this one has the L for Leonardo that way you know if you don't confuse them whereas this one doesn't have anything just because again we're not kids here this is this is real stuff going on alright nitty gritty alright we're getting down to business no time for fun and again the bandana bandanas are different this one's much more blue this one's not much more of a build type of nose this one's more rounded off so you can see very much different and another thing I'll point out toes they even did the toes different toenails no nails there you go so I very much think these are really awesome changed up molds I'm so glad I got these guys because when I first saw the 90s moving figure announced all I saw was Leonardo this was like last year maybe a year and a half ago when I saw the first pictures and I just thought it was just pretty much just slightly changed I thought the shell was just oh, I thought they took this shell added this pattern I thought they took his head changed it and that's it gave him brown swords I didn't realize how much different they were and I'm so glad to have them here together to show you guys you guys need to get these if you have these they're both awesome I really hope they continue this line with the high, high articulation I know we have Krang on the way as well as Shredder so if we're gonna do more cartoon villains possibly Toka and Razar mm -hmm. maybe maybe a movie Shredder mm -hmm. just hopefully not the mutated version that was dumb but the regular one I think would be cool Splinter we need a Splinter Casey Jones April, the 80s versions. We need those. And we could do a 90s Splinter. Actually, I think I actually really like the 90s Splinter. He was really, probably my one of my more favorites of the Splinter. I really did like the 90s movie Splinter. So we got that version too. Awesome. Casey and, and April, uh, only reason I feel weird about getting those figures for the 90s movies because I'm not crazy about live action action figures. Like action figures based on real humans. I just think they kind of come out weird. Depend, it depends on who makes them. But sometimes they come out really weird looking. And I know Hot Toys is really good about that. But this is Playmates. And I don't know if they're up to the challenge. But who knows? We'll see. If we can get a, a 80s cartoon Casey and April, I'll be super happy. That's just enough for me there. But we'll move on to the next Turtles just so you can get again more glimpses at who these guys are and where they came from. And again, here you can see Raphael with Raph, and oh my gosh, I just love seeing them standing next to each other. They just look so great. My favorite character in two separate forms. Oof, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. We need a 2003 classic collection because I actually did like those turtles, even if they did look exactly the same, just different color bandanas and skin tones. But they were pretty cool. I wasn't crazy about the show, but the turtles were cool. I like the voice actors anyway. That 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 just had so craziness in it. But still, uh, good. We need some IDW turtles. I'm gonna say this a million times. We need some current comic book turtles. I do know we have the three pack coming along. They announced that at Comic Con. We have the IDW old school original turtle. We have the retro '80s collection turtle, and we have the 2012 turtle. So it's gonna come in a three pack like that. Which is unfortunate, just because I already have the 80s Retro Turtle, and I already have the 2012 Turtle. So I really only need that IDW one. But, whatever. A backup in my collection, just in case, for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe I can have one in the Turtle Van, and one in the shelf. There we go. That, there! Actually, yeah, that'll work. That actually might motivate me to get all that stuff. So here we have the Donatello Duo. Looking great. Science Bros. Ready to do some science. Get in, bro. We're gonna do some science. 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 Ah, and they look great. Great, 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 great. 
I just, ah, oh my, I just love my Turtles collection. It's just coming out so wonderfully. Again, I'm, I'm just ready to get that Krang and Foot Soldier that's hasn't shown up yet, but I'm waiting. I'm here and I'm waiting. And again, you can see he has a much darker bow with white wraps, where he has a lighter bow with brown wraps, and his bow is a little more smooth and thinner, whereas his bow is a little more wood-looking. It's got some lines molded into it, darker, thicker. So just just to show you off what's going on there. And again, he has a lighter skin tone where this one has darker. So very cartoon-like, very live-action Jim Henson-like. J.H., where you at, J.H.? We need some more of these guys out here. And here we have the Mikester showing him off. Here he's got his orange chain nunchuckle. Where this one has it's the basic wood-looking one. I do like the differences in that, by the way. I do like the fact that they're very different. And I do wish this version had that grin. Like, let's just... I wouldn't mind if they both had the same grin. He looks, like, kind of angry here. Where he's just like, <laughs> Pizza! Okay, well, manga, dude! Stuff like that. I don't know. I feel like he should be that way. And he should be a little more gritty. Get those teeth showing us. <laughs> foot soldier, foot in the face! Just something like that. Go and show off the backs because I forgot to show it off in... I don't know. Maybe the other ones. But there they are. Look at that. There it is. Oh, oh. Again, you can see much more detailed, much more smoother. But I both loved him very, very much, very much. Uh, darker orange on that the bandana, where this one has a much more playful, bright orange. Even though the face says anger, the bandana says joy. So I really just cannot recommend this set enough. It's just so beautifully done. Each figure is unique in personality. Their weapons are all similar, which I do like. I like that they all have similar elbows and knee pads. I like that their sashes are all similar, but their bandanas are all unique. Because that was the whole feel of the 90s movie was just tough. We're just down to business. We're not playing around. Foot's here. Let's kick their butt. There's still jokes and all that, but you can definitely feel like much more rugged feel and they were in the sewers you know it was a lot of dark shadowy presences even in new york like up when they were up abroad it was a lot of nighttime scenes a lot of shadows walking in dark alleys and stuff like that you know hanging out in, at those arcades the well, lights were off a lot of the time kind of like raves stuff like that so I, I just love the feel of these movies love these figures love the sculpts i i just totally did not see the fact that each of their sculpts were individual coming from the 80s cartoon. I thought that was. This, I thought they had this basic same design, just different paint scheme. So I'm glad they didn't do it. I wish they, again. I I do wish he, they did have the wart spots kind of look, but I don't mind it not being there. Because again, this is inspired by the 90s movie. These aren't exact representations. Same with the 80s cartoon figures. Those are inspired by the 80s cartoon. They're not exactly the 80s cartoon. So. There are some liberties taken to how they would do things. And who knows, there's there's time for future figures. They're not done now. I'm going to say this probably a bunch of times in my videos, but this is the perfect time to be a fan of the 80s and... Wait, 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 why am I talking weird? Of the 80s and early 90s. We have Transformers in 80s. We have Ninja Turtles in 80s. Both of them having anniversaries. 30th anniversary for Transformers and for... Ninja Turtles, I think last year was their 30th. I think they were 83, right? So I know, no, were they 84? I know 86, 87 was the cartoon starting. So when did the comics, was the comics in 85? Or 84? Either way, they're, they're having their anniversary stuff going on. They have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2012 going on, which is beautifully done. Loving that. And they have this going on. All the classics collections going on. Retro figures. So Power Rangers... Transformers, Ninja Turtles, all the things that I'm into are all having anniversary sets, legacy sets, all this great stuff going on, and now is the perfect time to be a fan. Now is the time to get the collection going. Now is the time to start buying if you don't, and to keep on going, because you do not want to miss this. This is where your collection really starts taking off, with the legacy Power Rangers set, with the classic collection Ninja Turtles, and the 30th anniversary Transformers. So anyways guys, this has been Samurai Man. Don't forget to follow me on Tumblr at Mication, as well as Twitter at Mication, and Instagram at Mechas of Ironheart. 
Also, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to my channel and videos. I love talking to you guys. I've been talking to some buddies of mine on YouTube before I was making these videos. I actually lost the track time. I was like, kept going back and forth on the videos and stuff. So that was fun. I was enjoying that. I'm always glad to talk to people. I'm going to be at PowerMorphicon in a couple weeks. Don't forget. Uh, you, you don't know what I look like. You don't know my name or anything. So it's not like I'm expecting this to date or anything. But it's just fun to know, you know. I'm going to be hitting up Bruno and Mia. How MMPR toys. I, I talked to them last time I went to Robo Toy Fest, the same place as Paramorphicon. They had a really fun conversation. That was really awesome. Got a picture with them. And then I mean the Robo Toy bleh, the Robo Toy Fest previous to that met them also. That was the first time I met them, got a picture with them. Or of them. So it's on their Facebook and all that. So that's fun. You get to meet people. They're doing a panel this year, which is awesome. I'm excited for that. Uh, Black Nerd Comedy says he's gonna be there. Yay! I'm excited to meet him too. Hopefully I'll get the chance. That'll be awesome. And anyways guys, take it easy, have a great day, go on the hunts, they're out there, and until next time.